Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and in today's little dev update we are going to check out the latest in uh, the development of automation. And uh, good news first, I think is in order to say. Um, last episode I did talk about some stability issues and that stability issue was a hard crash on all Windows 7 systems and uh, that occurred as soon as you touched the slider basically and uh, we for some time didn't have any clue what it was it turned out to be an issue with Lua itself and its memory handling and it's conflicting with Windows 7's memory handler fortunately there was an update and the very latest version of Lua did solve that issue so that's uh, that's a fortunate turn of events all right let's take a quick look at where we are at in uh, the porting of uh, the car designer over to Unreal and I think it is time to just build a new car because that is now working from start to finish there's still a few uh, problems here and there but um, we shall take a look at them so uh, how about we choose a, um, a qu quick quick car a very quick car not this one because mid-engine and mid-engine cars are still uh, not quite implemented but um, this one for instance okay so front longitudinal steel and everything it's like it's working apart from some flickering panels here and there and <laughs> the wheels looking ridiculous um, this is working and morphing is working and that's all cool and look at this we finally have our color swatches and uh, I've prepared two two or three colors here um, grass green for instance yes it's very pretty and uh, rich red I made a new which is kind of similar to this one but a little bit more metallic and uh, that of course works we can modify them as we like and uh, brutal black ah, somehow the mirrors aren't included in the all selection right now but you can color them differently as, as you like you can make them plastic or, or chrome or, or carbon fiber oh yes and here we go so now we have our multicolored um, look for this car it's slightly strange but uh, let's roll with this and uh, progress further I'm not going to place fixtures because currently the placement is uh, broken as it's being worked on currently and uh, no no fixtures for, for us today but the uh, engines let's let's just throw in an engine and why not a V10 that kind of fits uh, for this kind of car so as you can see uh, we have a few more tooltips right here uh, in general, that's something that Andrew has been working on quite a bit um, and filling those out just in general giving you more information especially on sliders so uh, you get the benefits of making it larger and smaller uh, both of them which is slightly weird because there's not a list of negatives anywhere it's just all positive but that's how we did it in uh, the previous version of automation as well just listing the uh, the positives of each direction and then uh, assuming that people will then take those things as the negatives if applied to the other direction and that includes for the first time quality sliders uh, they never had a proper tooltip in old automation all right just uh, clicked together a 3.7 liter v10 and uh, just finished placing the last muffler and what I want you to take a look at is how handy these new values here are in the uh, stress bench basically um, you can straight away see where you can put your rev limiter if you don't run into too severe valve float that is uh, and yeah just take the maximum value of these Oh, the minimum, sorry. Uh, <laughs> maximum would be bad. So uh, you just go back here and yeah, 9,200. Sounds about right. There we go. And that is where uh, the um, drop from the for the reliability would start to come in severely, as you can see in the stats. Um, in the stats panel, we have also made slightly clearer. There are the different modes here. So uh, this is the... Uh, 
the these are the old values these are the new values and you can uh, see how they improved um, percentage wise uh, just the pure flat numbers and now it's uh, much clearer which one is the new value and versus the old value and so on and we space them out a bit more so that it's all a little nicer looking there is tons and tons of more polishing work to do here but uh, we're getting there as you can see it's uh, starting to look quite nice and usable okay let's give this engine a quick whirl Yeah, that, that should do for for our example car and here we have it and uh, let's see can we spot the engine in here somewhere uh, no oh look it's mid-engine it's proper mid-engine and why is that you ask well we haven't selected the drive type yet so it has placed the engine without the drive type selection and that's of course like I said in one of the previous episodes new um, that you and now we'll be uh, getting the information which engine uh, arrangement or which drive type arrangement would fit that engine size and then you can select it afterwards and now it is all in place as you can see here it's all nice looking and here we are on a tab which uh, requires a little bit of explanation as you can see a lot has changed so what are what are these markers here you ask well um, we now give you the minimum and maximum, oh, well, minimum isn't really that relevant in this case, minimum and maximum for the tire width, and the tire width is now the most important part, well, apart from maybe the tire diameter. We do need larger tires on this one. And uh, then you can you can change tire size as you used to, but now you you see where you can go with the sliders. And that is something we want to have throughout the uh, the car design. A little bit more feedback right on the sliders, just so you know where you are at within the range you are allowed to use. Uh, the plan is to have them limited as such that you still see the, the whole line and you can push the slider right to the edge and no further. Right now it is like being placed on the edge and sometimes that doesn't really work. So it's, it's still... A little rough but uh, I think the concept is a good one just more f more feedback in general does help if we now go to the brakes tab you see that uh, basically the same as previously is true and um, if we choose 14 inch rims here like very small then you see that this line for the tire size uh, for the brake size is dependent on the rim size and you get the line down there maximum 275s and if we uh, amp up the rim size once again then of course after uh, that's currently not updating after updating uh, it then gives us the 4420 blazing it of course and here we come to another new thing that is in and that is uh, more split up um, driving aids section where the power steering is removed from the general steering aids and no longer are we dealing with tick boxes but rather we have our standard selection lists where the further down the list you move the better quality the component gets and basically takes over the functionality of the previous one too and uh, that is very true for like all the traction aids and the power steering and we thought like that we have so little information currently in the old automation um, which is tied to the steering of the car while that you would think is a very important aspect of a car and how it feels so yeah a little bit more, more detail coming uh, coming to this aspect while on the traction aid side you also basically have a system which builds on components that already need to be there if you have an anti-lock braking system you kind of need to have um, wheel speed sensors and uh, that is the basis for traction control in general so uh, then electronic stability also makes use of that one really neat thing i want to show you too is we have changed the ride height system so what has changed the ride height well these are definitely aren't uh, truck chassis or off-roader chassis dedicated ones so uh, you will never get proper ground clearance because something is hanging in the way like the suspension and shit but 
Um, the ride height system is now much more accurate. Who remembers the uh, LMP body, uh, the Le Mans body in the current public version of automation, having a minimum ride height of something like 23 centimeters? Yeah, that, that kind of won't happen anymore of the new system. And um, it kind of looks like the, the same as always, but um, if you take a look here, you get the actual ride height in centimeters and can adjust it freely. And as you can see, 3.7 centimeters, uh, you, can, you can try to sell this car. Uh, it will have horrible issues with like, uh, yeah, dying on the road. Uh, lots of sparks, it will be fireworks. But uh, you can go much lower and much higher if you wanted to. We can make this easily a... Oh, that's 20, 23. That's, that's about what the Le Mans body supposedly had. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so this is, this is working much better in general. On the final testing page, we get plenty and plenty of uh, stats with our new own little mini tooltip of what each icon is so that we help you out. And as you can see, the performance stats are all in here on the same page with the car stats. And that is possible now because we have iconographied everything. But all right, we got through this episode without uh, any crashes or anything. So um, as you can see, well, Things are coming together and <laughs> stability issues are no more, at least for me, and my system was the most crashy of all. So uh, that's, that's all a good sign. And currently it seems like we have all the big issues sorted out. There are certainly uh, big issues left with content. As uh, you can see from the list of cars, we have limited the selection currently to um, just a set of 20 bodies. Is it actually 20? No, it's 18. Um, 18 bodies that uh, we test things with, like a wide range of different bodies. And once we have everything worked out with bounding boxes and stuff, then we will um, we will change the other existing cars, or 300 something of them, to put them in here and uh, to complete the uh, the the old list of cars plus a few new ones, of course. So now mainly it is just polishing and uh, yeah, fixing up the, the few last things. There's still plenty and plenty of things to do. The to-do list, I, I could probably write a few pages of things that still need to, uh, to change. But um, considering the size of those things, we should be getting through reasonably quickly. And I will update you regarding a, a potential release date and whatnot in the next little dev update. And I don't think it will take too long before we get that one. So um, yeah, we are definitely moving closer to an uh, open beta of this version. All right, I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.